The King of Binding Vows is at it again, all right, guys. It's time to go over Chapter 259 of JJK. We delve into Yuji's backstory and learn about his brothers. The chapter begins with a flashback where Yuji asks Chozo to teach him convergence, a skill Chozo struggles to explain because he's not so great at it himself. Then Takeshi steps in and breaks down the whole deal about blood manipulation and convergence for Yuji. He even suggests teaching him a cool move called the supernova attack, where you basically make a giant ball of blood and then explode it into shotgun-like blasts. But Takeshi thinks this move isn't the best idea for Yuji, and instead advises him to focus on using blood manipulation to stop bleeding and heal wounds, which is what Yuji has been doing all along in the last chapter when Sukuna cut off his leg. In the present scene, we witness Sukuna gearing up his flame arrow attack, which turns out to be his actual curse technique called Kamino. This technique is deadly because it's packed with Sukuna's cursed energy, meaning if it hits someone like Jogo or somebody as strong as Maharaga, they're pretty much toast. The catch here is that within Sukuna's domain, there are not just one, but four people. Yuji, Chozo, Maki, and other sorcerers. Sukuna wants to take them all out with his flame arrow, which means he needs to amp up its range and speed so that nobody can dodge it. To achieve this, he has to enhance the technique using his cursed energy, making it faster and able to cover a wider area without losing any firepower. And he does this using a binding vow again. Now this is just terrible writing. He got hit with eight black flashes from Yuji earlier and nearly has zero cursed energy, yet still used domain expansion due to a binding vow. Yuji and the other sorcerers manage to hold up against it, but then Sukuna brings out Kamo, an even more broken technique he couldn't even bring out against Gojo. It's extremely broken and uses up a lot of curse energy because it's a one-shot, as stated in the chapter. If you don't believe it's broken, just ask Jogo, Maharaga, and the poor soul who ended up dead in this chapter. It feels like binding vows are being thrown around without real consequences, which is frustrating. There were supposed to be risks or consequences when using them, but it seems like Sukuna's just spamming them at this point. The story is losing its grip on consistency, making the power dynamics feel off. But any freaking way Urami and Hikari's fierce battle, Urami believes it's all over once they sense the technique being unleashed. Things seem calm momentarily, however. A massive fireball covers the entire sky. The narrator drops a bombshell, revealing that Kamino's heat is so intense that it causes overpressurization within Sukuna's domain expansion, resulting in instant death for everything inside. As the massive 200-meter fireball illuminates the sky, obliterating everything in its path and decimating the entire city, the situation becomes dire. Just as the explosion is about to engulf Yuji, Chozo selflessly steps in, wrapping his brother in blood to shield him from the fiery blast. In a heartbreaking sacrifice, Chozo ultimately gives his life to protect Yuji, creating a simple domain expansion around them in his final moments. Apologizing to Yuji for not being more helpful on the battlefield, Chozo is consumed by the flames of Kamino as he burns alive. Yuji, devastated, begs him to stop and questions why he's... In a touching moment, Chozo and his brothers reunite in the soul plane for a final goodbye. Despite the sadness, Chozo finds some joy in Yuji mastering RCT faster than him. Yuji humbly credits Sukuna's help for this, but Chozo brushes it off, saying it's just natural for younger siblings to excel. Yuji expresses deep gratitude to Chozo for being there through thick and thin, not just as a brother, but as a true friend. When Yuji returns to reality, he's met with a devastating scene, a wasteland, nothing but death and destruction all around him. Feeling lost and overwhelmed, Yuji cries out, desperate to know if anyone else has survived. Just when he thinks he's truly alone, Sukuna emerges from the smoke, ready to deliver the final blow. But then a ray of hope appears as another figure emerges, Yuji's other brother Todo with a weird wrap on his hand. Despite Yuji's urge to check on their friends, Todos remind him that they can't give up. Remembering that their friends are relying on them gives Yuji the strength to shake off his despair. With one brother lost but another still standing, they're ready to face Sukuna once more as the ultimate tag team.